You, we've been taught to be respectful, but I still see people on the news and all over Instagram still getting punished and still getting hurt. So what, are we still supposed to respect them without anything changing? Well, first of all, what you don't want to do is stereotype or put everybody in the same basket. Yes, I had to face many of these same realities when I was growing up. But guess what? It's a lot better for you than it was for me because there are opportunities that you have today because of what we went through in my day that, that have come to you. So while the same problem is still there, it's there in different ways. And as long as you have people, and as long as there's sin in the world, then we're going to have to face trouble. Jesus said it. In this world, you're going to have trouble. So how much longer? I don't know. Maybe till Jesus comes. But even though we can't control what everybody does, we can control what we do. I've tried to take what my father has given me and make it better, not only for my children and grandchildren, you, but to make it better for the people God has brought in my sphere of influence. And I hope what you have received from me, from your parents, causes you to make as much influence for good to improve people's lives because you've, you've benefited from it yourself. So other people should benefit from it because you have gotten it. So while you can't change the whole world, you can change everybody who touches your world because of the kind of young man you seek to be to please God and benefit others. Okay, Poppy. So I believe that right now in our country, black people are in more of, are in a hurting stage right now and so but all lives are important but how do we focus on the black lives more right now well here's what the bible focuses on it focuses on injustice the bible says from god's throne comes down justice parents are told to raise their kids in genesis 18 with a focus on justice so wherever we see injustice we need to address it. We're dealing with an issue right now in the African-American community about injustice. And so to the degree that black people, African-Americans are affected by injustice, those injustices must be addressed, clarified, and corrected, whether it's from individuals or whether it is from structures in society that allows for it or promotes it. But as we do it, we must do it in a righteous way, which is why justice is always paired with righteousness in the Bible, because God wants you to deal with injustice, but he wants you to deal with it in a way that's acceptable to him, which is righteousness. And since black people are the focus of that right now, due to circumstances from history, as well as contemporary realities, that is why there is that focus today. It could be somebody else tomorrow. But the focus on injustice and apply it to whatever group needs that focus is always in agreement with scripture. So, Poppy, I have friends of all different colors, but sometimes at school, I sometimes feel like I'm the outsider. Do you not have to deal with that? Well, uh, Kanan, one of the issues is to try to answer the question why. Sometimes we feel like the outsider because we're different, maybe personality difference, racial difference, or preferences. The, the people prefer one thing, I prefer something else. The question is, am I treated badly because I'm black by my white friends? Because if they're not treating you wrongly, then it just may be your comfort level. You may just need to be more 
comfortable. Because sometimes when something is new or people are not used to something because they've been around one group and now they're being introduced to another group, it takes a while to get used to each other. So here's a biblical principle. It's in Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it will be given to you, pressed down and running over. In other words, the thing you want, give to somebody else, and then God will make sure it comes back to you. So if you want to be friended, then be friendly. Make sure that you give out what you want God to give back to you. And it may come from them, but God has a way of bringing it from somebody else who you haven't met yet. So when you feel an outsider, Act and conduct yourself like an insider in the right way. And then watch God come back around and answer your need because you answered somebody else's. So this racial injustice has been going on for a while. Who do you think is responsible and who's supposed to fix it? Well, I believe the major way that this will get fixed is by the church, uh, Trey. If the ch the church helped cause it. And the, the way the church helped to cause the racial problem was it made it okay. It said that this is how God wanted it. And they, they perpetuated a lie that had infiltrated like a cancer, the culture. So since the church helped to cause it, the church has got to lead the way to fix it. All these politicians, they can do good things. They can put like a Band-Aid over it for a while but it's a spiritual issue. It's an issue of the heart. Whenever you dislike a person because of the color of the skin, that's an evil sin before it's a problem of skin. Now we talk about skin, but it's really sin applied to skin. So we need people who are going to teach God's standard about race as a sin and let it be known that God is displeased with their racism, God is displeased with their prejudice or discrimination. And when it gets viewed as a sin against God and not just a sin against man, now it becomes something that has to be addressed at a much higher level. Until the church addresses it, it cannot be fully addressed like God wants it to be. I want you young men to become men of valor. The Bible talks about men of valor. They weren't just the ordinary, regular guys. These were men who rose to a higher level. These were men who could be trusted at the highest level. They weren't trying to be part of the crowd. They were trying to rise above the crowd. You know, in sports, you can be on the team or you can be a leader among your peers and a leader of the team. We're in desperate need for leaders. We certainly need African-American leaders, but we also need leaders who know how to build bridges so that unity is restored, decency is restored, kindness is restored, and Jesus Christ is exalted. And if you become those kind of young men, you won't just be part of the crowd. You'll be giving a model for the crowd to follow. And in our world today, we have a generation of young men who are looking for other men to follow. Be the kind of young man worth following.